directing a scene, essentially. You can have all kinds of things trigger in a complete timeline, and you're kind of orchestrating this whole thing that happens. So great for cinematics, great for just initial gameplay element, all kinds of stuff. So really exciting to see that, to see when that comes. It's going to be awesome. So check out on Unity's website here, Pages of the Blacksmith. Uh, we, we mentioned it, I think, in the first module today. Play this, check it out. They've released some of the assets for this. Really phenomenal. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the assets just came out. And, I mean, the quality of everything, uh, uh, using a standard shader that we talked about, physically based rendering, um, really neat stuff. All right, so let's go back. Moving cameras, let's look at a quick demo of animating a particular camera here. So let's assume that we want to start this camera out. Uh, we already have an animation defined for this camera, which is OK if I look at this. Here's the animation controller. We looked at this earlier with a zombie. Right now we have one and only one um, animation. That's our camera blur. So we want to create another animation. And we can do that in our animation window here. Let's highlight our camera. You have to make sure your camera's highlighted. I'm going to drop this down and create a new clip. This is a new animation file. So the two things required for animation are the animator component on your game object and a .anim file. Now, the animations I did on the zombie earlier was because Matt had already created the essentially the animation data in another tool that got imported in Unity. Yep. We can create our own as well. Um, and we can see what an animation looks like. If we want to look at what a zombie animation looks like, here it is. So Matt had created this in Maya. I believe you did your animations in, right? Correct. And look at all those keyframes and data. So a zombie idle takes the chest front back and does this along some time, some timeline. We can actually preview this. And um, you know, there was a couple questions earlier of people asking, well, can you do some of these animations within Unity? And so as it stands, um, you, you can't really do it within Unity. You really need an, out, an external tool that, that's specific for animation for rigged characters to do that. But there are some pretty great tools that people have launched. Uh, I think one of them that just came out is called Skelly, and that'll actually let you take a rigged character and animate it within Unity just by keyframing joints and things like that. So yes, it is possible. You can do it. Um, so just a yeah, just a heads up on on some of those questions I got earlier. I saw some. Yeah, this guy right here about that. Skelly. Yeah, I'm a proud owner of Skelly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, complex animations. When you look at all the data that an animation tool makes. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even for one tenth of a second, look at all that data that was included just there for one tenth of a second from this area over. That's a lot of keyframes. That's, that's a lot. Uh, also, I, 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 whenever I do animations in Maya or uh, Blender, any other program I'm, I'm using uh, to make my rigs, I always bake all my keyframes because I want to make sure that the animation that I created within Maya comes in exactly how I made it within Maya, right? So part of the reason you're seeing a lot of those keyframes are in there is because I literally baked that entire sequence, every single frame. So when it came into Unity, it had all of that data on every single frame. That's not always the case. Because if so, not, it'll kind of interpolate some of that data. Exactly. Your... Sometimes if you don't bake your entire sequence, Unity itself will try to interpolate um, those specific movements, and it'll try to tween in between it for you. And you might not get exactly the result you're looking yeah. for. It might be slightly off. So as a rule of thumb, if you create an animation in 3CO Max or Maya or Blender or whatever it is, um, bake it out before you bring it in, because then you'll ensure that you're going to get exactly what you created in another program in Unity. It's kind of like a one- It's funny, because going into like the world of game development and, and, and art, this term bake, I'm like, what the heck does what bake, bake mean? And it's, it's, everywhere. Used, it's, it's all over the place, right? Yeah. It's when you basically take some sort of settings and pre-calculate ahead of time and, and set it into something. Yeah. That's bake. Baking. So you're taking that animation data and baking it. Or in the case of lighting, we are pre-calculating ahead of time and baking it, making an image from it so we can have it pre-calculated and use it later. You'll you'll baking. hear the term if you're if you're new to game development, you will be very familiar with the term <laughs> baking in in, the, in in a matter of weeks. Absolutely. You'll be light baking, you'll be baking animation, you'll be baking cakes. baking textures. Baking. <laughs> There's there is a lot of baking that's happening. And basically, yeah, like you said, it's just basically calculating behind the scenes yeah. before you actually use it. So it's, uh, it, it, the, I guess the term is, is bake. <laughs> it makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and take our camera. We already have that blur animation here. We're going to create a new animation. So make sure your camera's highlighted while this window's open. It's, it is context sensitive. So make sure your camera's highlighted. Drop this down. We're going to create a new clip. And this particular clip, since I already threw my one in the wrong location here, I'll do this one there as well. We'll call this um, 
Camera, fly by. Nothing's pointing to this right now, but I can still test it out. I can still develop against it. So my, my camera is currently there. For my flyby, let's, I'll start there. So I'll move this object just a little bit so it logs its initial position. Oh, let me go into record mode here. Move that just a little bit. There we go. Now we have recorded its initial position. I can even fix this back up to start it. Zero, zero, zero. Now at, say, let's go to two seconds. And at two seconds, maybe I want to be here, there, over here. And then maybe at four seconds, let's come down in and we're going to do a little rotation here. So let's go and rotate around the X. By X, I mean X, not Y. <laughs> Again, as Mark said earlier, we can just click on these letters, which I like to do sometimes. Let's kind of flatten that out a little bit and move this down. And then finally, we'll uh, maybe come by for a fast, um, maybe like 10 seconds over here, and we'll rotate it around our Y axis. Something like that. Let's just see how that works. All right, so our animation is done. And it's just going to repeat over and over again. But now if I want to trigger this animation off, come over to that animator window. Let's stop our recording and playing. We need some way to get over to our uh, camera flyby. And let me maximize this. And let's go from our any state to camera flyby. And once we're done with that, we're going to exit back out and go back to our camera blur state. How do we get to camera flyby? By adding a parameter, a trigger. We'll just call that flyby. And we'll say that when we, this transition from any state to camera flyby will be triggered. In other words, it will happen when somebody sets that value to true. And in other words, when they set that value, since it's a trigger, it's not really true or false. It is behind the scenes, but you just click it and it just happens. So let's watch this here. We'll click play. Pop out my animator window. So I'm blurring right now. And we'll see camera blur. Let's go to our game uh, tab here so we can see that. Now if I want to trigger out that flyby, there we go. I clicked it once. Now it's still blurry because I, I happen to trigger this in the middle of a camera blur. And now we go back to the kind of that initial camera blur location and settings there. So we can overlap these. We can trigger them off just like we did with a zombie. We can change any of these values here. And, and that's, you know, like we said before, just using that and little things like that, like tweening your camera, adding in these post-processing effects or camera effects, all that's just going to give your product that much more of a little, a little, little, quality. little yeah, a little, little more quality, of a quality <laughs> edge. Um, it, you'll notice a lot of products that are out there, they, they do that because it really, it really just gives it that extra little layer of polish that I think it needs. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're an indie game designer and you're doing things for Steam, go nuts, man. Get all the, the best, you know, camera effects you can find and use them. Use them. Really make that, that product shine, you know. It's awesome. Cool. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's it for this module. Next, we are going to talk about UI. And my particle effects. The wow factor. Wow. I actually <laughs> wow. had a lot of people uh, hit me up on the, the forums, oh. on, and they were talking about, you know, how do you create particle effects, that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go uh, a lot of magic spell questions, things like that. So uh, we'll show kind of uh, some initial pieces of what you would need to create something like that, but I'll we'll kind of guide you through uh, that whole process, and we'll get rolling with it. It'll be cool. Cool. Awesome. See you shortly. Welcome back once again to building Windows 10 games with Unity 5. Matt Newman joining me on this module once again. And uh, this one, we're going to be talking about some cool stuff, UI and the uh, particles. Oh, wow factor. You're not amazing. supposed to tell them what the wow factor oh, is yet. It's a wow surprise. Fa wow factor. But while we're talking about particles, particles are cool. You're going to show a neat demo with particles. Yes. Um, there are so many things you can do with particles. Well, we'll talk about there. It just gets me, gets me excited. I want to talk about particles and, you know, 
<laughs> Whoa, calm down. Potions and magic and <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Particles are, are, are pretty much everything, right? Uh, so you can help yourself. You yeah. start rolling I mean, on they're, it, they're, right? they're gonna it's give addictive. you they're gonna give you that that uh, that it's a low hit and cost of the CPU. Very efficient. It's very efficient. It's going to give you that extra kind of uh, animated quality. Things will feel like they're moving. You can use them for bullets to to magic. To Wait till smoke, you see what we to, can do with particles. You can even use them for clouds. You can use them for rain. You can use them for explosions. Anything. So anything. Particles are your best friend. Um, I would say. Learn the Shuriken system very well in Unity, and I'll show you some demos on, on how to kind of get your feet wet with it and start doing stuff with it. Amazing things with particles. Yeah, and uh, from there, you know, use them in, in everything you do. I mean, when you're, you know, and, and there's different stages of particles too, and, and we'll get into that when we explain it. But um, you know, you want to, <laughs> you really want to to think about the particles and and what you can do. Potions with and magic and snow and fire yeah. and smoke and very uh, cool. gore. You know, bats, gore, blood. Yeah, whatever. Let's start out by talking about the Unity UI. Okay. And then we'll look at the wow factor after that. Unity UI has a little bit of a history behind it here. What is Unity UI? Well, what is Unity? So this allows placement of game objects in your scene that will overlay, uh, ideally, overlay onto your screen. So we looked at a heads-up display, coins, things like that. Yep. Um, you, you can drag and drop like a coin up in your scene, or you can actually project things from other areas. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had a 3D model running around somewhere else and you wanted to project out on your screen. So you can do some really neat with that. As we're going to see, uh, this is meant for layouts. Like It's meant to overlay on your screen, give you a UI, um, something that Pixel perfect layouts, scaling your layout screen, scaling your screen. Yep. Right. If you have a coin we saw on our uh, display for a game, how do you scale that out? So we're going to look at some things that you can do based on that. Even add uh, particles to UI as well. Can even add particles, um, text, and image components, plus the code to operate them, form the bulk of, of nearly any UI component that we're going to look at. Yep. There's a text component for displaying text on your screen and an image component. Uh, which is different than the images that we looked at in the, which is slightly different than the images we looked at in uh, when we looked at the 2D project with orthographic cameras. Um, but text and image components give us the bulk of what we see with our UI components, as you'll see shortly. Initially, this was, uh, there's a long history on Unity UI. They had a, a very inefficient old system, and uh, they had mentioned several times there was going to be a new system released, and it didn't happen, and everyone's like, when's it coming? So finally, they, they in uh, the later 4.x version, I think it was 4.5, uh, was when they first announced the, um, the Unity, what well, they initially called UGUI, now it's uh, Unity UI. Mm -hmm. um, and it was initially formed, from my understanding, off the base of NGUI, which was one of the number one selling assets of, of all time in the Asset Store to be able to really create really powerful layouts um, on, on top of your screen. Really neat stuff with that. And then, um, so this was kind of initially based off that. The, actually, uh, two folks that did NGUI and Unity worked together. There's a whole story you can watch on Unite when they talked about this whole process and their old UI systems and the history of it. Uh, but now we have Unity UI. So let's start talking about what's required for Unity UI. Everything's inside of a canvas, and you have various canvas modes. Those UI elements, so, for example, if you want to display a coin in the upper left-hand corner all the time, that must be inside of a canvas game object. Must be. By default, you'll see it's going to create an event system, uh, which is going to detect things like clicking when you click on a game object in your, uh, in your canvas. And so the event system will detect those actions and send them, and I will show you that as well. And a canvas has three modes. If you look on a canvas game object, there's a render mode, and it's a screen space overlay, which is kind of what you expect when you think about like um, a HUD, a heads-up display. Yep. It's overlaid onto, onto your UI. So there's the overlay mode, there's a camera mode, which is in other words, there's some camera in your game looking at something, and that's gonna be overlaid on top of your UI. Uh, and now they've also added world space canvas. So you can actually take everything we're gonna show you in a canvas, and throw it on a door somewhere inside of your game, right? It's, cool. You can throw it around anywhere in the world. So it doesn't have to be overlaid on top of the screen. It can literally be a game object inside of your world, but still act like a canvas and do all the cool things a canvas can do. Very cool. Oops. That's a world space canvas? Is that world what? space, yep. Cool. Uh, there's the rect transform. So to date, we've looked at a game object. And a game object had the basic properties of a name, a tag, and a transform. And you'll see that when you go to the Unity UI system, you're still dealing with game objects. But to help you out and to make a little bit more sense because of how these are laid out, 
you get a rect transform object. And we're going to look at that. It makes it super easy to deal with these 2D elements that you're overlaying onto a screen. Um, you can define your location, your rotation, and the anchoring system, which is used for uh, positioning. You can also use pivots for your rotation, and you actually have a size, width, and a height, for example, that you can specify on these. This makes it really easy to work with.